another in interesting thing that, that happened to me this morning is I woke up and found that Tobias used to have a, a black Fernandez Strat just like mine. Oh, I saw that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. My first relationship. Bro, guitar. okay, a couple questions. Mm -hmm. Those are hard guitars to find. Okay. And, 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 well, they're hard guitars to find in the States. Uh, in the 80s, there was only a few places that sold Fernandez guitars, and that's how I ended up with one. How did you end up with one all the way in Sweden? Did, you, did you contact Fernandez? Did you get it directly no, from no, Japan? No, no. Or... no way. No. I, I was seven or eight years old, and there was one, and this is this must be, okay, so do the math. I'm, this is 89? Mm-hmm. 88, 89. Yeah. And um, I found one at the um, at the guitar shop in Lin Shopping where I mm -hmm. where I was born. Mm -hmm. Wow, that you know that's amazing because so. <laughs> because it's a long way from Japan to Sweden. And yeah, especially back then. Yeah, and, and they they only had limited distribution. Fernandez was a small guitar company from Japan that limited uh, uh, distribution. I only knew of a couple places to buy those guitars. Mm -hmm. And I, I bought one because, you know, I went, at the time, we weren't, we weren't, uh, weren't selling that many albums, but a Fernandez guitar was a good guitar for the money. You know, it wasn't like, it wasn't like, you know, ESP or even like Fender or Gibson, but they were still made well and they sounded good. And that's why I played one because it was some of the, it was one of the better strats that was not a fender did you know he played one uh pretty this coincided to that yes <laughs> pretty obvious so was that what got you at seven or eight to go and see ah oh, i know that guitar or what pretty you... much yes it's it's sort of cloudy in my head which came first mm -hmm. if it was the uh the knowing i mean i had a lot of heroes at the time that also played strats so for me, just having a Strat was just like a, that's the guitar. Because this was like, as I said, it was the late eighties. So you had like a myriad of colors of like all kinds of weird. Yeah. Like guitars back then neon were crazy. Shit yeah. On the wall. You had tiger stripe guitars. You had, you know, like guitars with like, you know, Japanese flag on it. You know, back then it was the, oh, yeah, the era those. of like really badly Oh, graphically yeah. designed guitars <laughs> i mean there was some bad graphics on some of those guitars you know yes. like you know women spray splayed out on the on the guitars and bikinis you know it, it all reeked of kind of like you know the hollywood glam hair metal thing too right i got you. yeah i got you right. well so here you are on tour so what do you what have you observed tell us a little bit what you've observed um maybe seeing these guys at a little closer quarters <laughs> Well, I mean, the tour so far has been fantastic. Thank you so much for hey, taking hey. so good care of us. Yeah, and, you know, uh, it's our honor. It really is. I mean, we all are big Ghost fans, and we want the we want the, to put on the best possible show for our fans, we, and it, and that means bringing out the best possible bands we can to to you know play with us, and and and. and, and we feel it's important to, to be able to put out a, a you know a very like well rounded out show that offers a lot of different stuff. And you guys, your music and your show just offers so much, so so much of a different sort of thing than we do that I think it works just works out really really well. Thank you. It's a good balance. <laughs> no, it yeah. feels. I mean, it's. I mean, I couldn't uh, really imagine anything more inspiring and and. Um, it's, uh, I, I think the setup as well is, is really good for us because even though we have opened up for you guys before over the years, um, I think that even though I can't really come up with like a terrible um, situation, but not seldom when you are a small band and you come in and you open up for a really big band, it can turn out to be a little daunting and especially if you are basically too new of a band and you're being thrown out sort of out of the nest and you can't really sort of fly um and you know if you lose 30 40 thousand people it that's not cool <laughs> it's you know yeah. um and i definitely think that now coming in at, at this level for us 
where we've done a few rounds. We've gone to most of these. We've gone to most of these places several times, and we already have a crowd. It feels like there's like enough people out there to sort of like, mm, oh yeah, I like what you do. Yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. And they're sort of policing each other a little. So you feel that well. Towards the end of the show, where we're just about done, it feels like we've gathered at least a majority of the crowd, which is mm -hmm. a very good thing. And I, I think that that definitely, you need to sort of come in at a certain level to be, um, I guess, welcomed by the crowd to do that. Because it's them allowing you, in a way, to to entertain them. So yeah. For me, whenever we play... <laughs> It's an, a real event in my own head. <laughs> and, and so whether it's like, you know, small little theater, an arena or freaking stadium with 47,000 people, in my mind, it's all just a, the biggest event. You know, walking out on stage for me, in my mind, is an event. It's an because it really is in my 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 small little life of like, you know, waking up and like, you know, meditating, doing yoga, playing guitar, and reading. Then, you know, X hours later, walking out on stage to 47,000 people, in my mind, that is a fucking event. And, it, and at that point, it doesn't matter what anyone else is thinking, whether they're thinking, it's a festival, it's a metallic gig, it's, you know, it's an event, it's a fucking, you know, groundbreaking experience, whatever. In my mind, it will, it's in an event, and I approach it like like it's the fucking last show I'm gonna play, and just fucking give it my all. And to me, it it neutral not neutralizes, but it evens out all the shows, no matter if they're big or small. You know that having that night mindset allows me to go out there and play the same show, whether it's a small show in front of ten people or. So, Medium-sized show, 10,000 people, or a massive show in front of 110,000 people. It's always an event in my mind. Hmm. And so that's, that's kind of my, how I see it. And I can only imagine with you guys and, and, uh, and you know, all the preparation that goes into like presenting this really cool, like in, really it's just like, like a uh, 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 show that like, perceptually it's it's just like it has so much coming at you visually it has so much coming at you musically it has so much coming at you you know it, it it's to me whenever you, whenever they play in my mind too it's like an event it's like going to you know, see a freaking movie or a stage play you know so i mean i don't mean to answer for you but i kind of that's how i kind of see <laughs> what he see said. you guys <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for us, for me personally, I think I speak for everyone. Um, it's like being here doing this tour, opening up for you guys, is basically two different things in terms of, or it's two separate things. It's one, the the amazingness of doing a big tour like this, being asked to do it, being able to do it, being uh, having the uh, the ability to actually put on a performance um and then as soon as like you're geared up and, and out on your way out to stage you can't think about that anymore you need to sort of like eh, you know you, you need to go out out and entertain people and um the one thing i've noticed the the bigger that we the bigger we get even on our own there is some sort of breaking point when you're playing uh, clubs of a certain size and you grow into bigger venues and you eventually end up hopefully in arenas when you're playing in front of a lot of people even though it's your draw there's going to be a lot of people in the room that aren't a hundred percent aware of everything that you do the same way that you would had if you just played in front of the 300 most diehard hardcore collector so not saying you don't have to entertain those 300 people if you only have them in front of you, but when you have a thousand, two thousand or more, you need to make sure that everyone, even up there in the like nosebleeds, you reach out to them. Uh, and even on a headline date, 
you can definitely have a bad day. When you fail at grabbing everyone and entertaining yeah, them. Connecting. Yes. And that connection, because there's always going to be someone next to the fan who is like, maybe heard a song on the radio. Might like it okay, but is not the diehard fan. And my job is to make everyone feel like they leave as a fan who want who, who would maybe want to see it again, fortunately, or hopefully, but but at least feel good about the investment of being there that night. And and opening up for a bigger band when you have a lot of people coming in where there's a lot of people who are not necessarily there for anything but the, the fact that it's a big spectacle in town and, you know, I'm going to hear Enter Sandman. I need to reach out to that person. And coming here to Manchester City, the city Manchester, playing at Manchester City home ground, it feels like me and my team are coming in to play against Manchester City.